Welcome to my channel. Aquaba. Hola. Aquaba is welcome in West African language in Ghanaian. And hola is hello in Spanish. So today, uh, my dish today is going to be two countries are going to collide on one plate. The first thing I'm going to make is Cuban style oxtail. Now oxtail, of course you all know, is a tail of the cow. It's a very robust meaty flavor. It tastes like a very, very, um, it tastes like steak, but it's just moist and so delicious. If you don't have oxtail, oxtail is a little bit pricey. If you don't have oxtail, you can use um, short ribs or veal, but it's not going to be as robust as oxtail. So I'm going to make oxtail Cuban style today. And then Cuba meets West Africa today. We are going to make some jollof African rice. So delicious. I make it with my jasmine rice. Today we are using my cazuela. <laughs> so I have two tablespoons of vegetable oil heating up in there. And let me show you the spices that we're going to use and the ingredients that we're going to, that we're going to use over here. Follow me over here and I'll show you what we're going to put and what our jollof African rice consists of. We need a can of drained black eyed peas. We are going to use a cup of diced carrots, half a medium yellow onion, which I've already diced. We've got some cumin. We've got, we are also going to use two teaspoons of tomato paste. And I don't have it here, but we're also, I'll show you. We're also going to use, aside from the cumin, we're going to use some chicken base. And uh, I'm going to put a little twist on it and we're going to make our rice yellow. It's going to be delicious. So let's get cooking. I'll meet you at the stove. Okay, guys, so I put my camera down. Our oil is hot, getting hot. I'm going to drop my onions in. You hear that delicious sizzle. And I'm going to drop our carrots in. Now I'm going to drop in my pinch of salt so that our onions will sweat and become translucent. Here's my little pinch of salt. And we'll want to stir that around. So once my onions are translucent, once my onions become translucent, I'm going to add my spices, which is the chicken base, the cumin, the tomato paste, the black pepper, and then we will be on our way. We will add our black eyed peas or carita beans once all of that has simmered and has cooked for about 10 minutes. So I'll be back. And when you see me using my white jasmine rice, why I don't wash my rice? Well, some people believe that washing your rice gets talc off the rice or starch off the rice no the those are the minerals in the rice so i keep all the minerals that's the reason why i don't wash my rice i mean it, it's up to you you can wash your rice or not but my my thing is not washing my rice so today since um there's another ingredient in the rice i'm sorry that i forgot to add that i'm going to use another uh not ingredient, yeah, ingredient, spice. It is ground allspice. I'm not gonna eyeball this because this or the chicken base I'm not gonna eyeball because ground allspice is very, very potent and you don't wanna go over what you're supposed to because it will overpower your entire dish, okay? So now that my onions have become translucent, we are gonna start adding, it's almost there, a few more minutes. Oh my gosh, the extractor's not on again, you guys. My husband's probably in the room. He's going to start freaking out soon. And by the way, the oxtail's a very tough piece of meat. So with oxtail, uh, I have the my little uh, presto machine, my little machine that I use to make rice, and it's also a pressure cooker. I pressure cook my oxtail for 20 minutes. Keep in mind, if you've never used a pressure cooker, you know, be very cautious. A pressure cooker is... Uh, is a double-edged sword. It can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So be very careful. So if you don't, just grab a pot, start early, 
boil your oxtail with a tablespoon of vinegar in it for about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes. The pressure cooking, what it does is it just makes it maybe half or even a quarter of the time. I would say a quarter of the time you can get it done. The easy gadget machines, like the one I have to make my rice that I've shown you in this video before, uh, come with all that included to make rice, to make different things. You can make poultry, fish, you can... The only thing it doesn't do is air fry. It does everything else but air fry. Which I haven't gotten my air fryer yet, but but I'm going to. I'm going to try that. My brother says that once you try it, you'll never cook with oil again. But I don't know about that. I'm Cuban, so I really don't know about that. Okay, our onions are ready, guys. So let's, let me grab my spices. All right, so we've got... I'm going to measure my chicken base because it's very salty if you put too much. So I'm going to grab two tablespoons of chicken base. All right, we got one and two. Oh, come on, buddy. I got to get my larger. There's two and two. All right. Now we are going to get a quarter of a teaspoon. Hang on a second. It's here. Where are you, buddy? Half a teaspoon, excuse me, half a teaspoon of allspice. Like I said, you guys, this is some potent stuff. I mean, this will, this will honestly overpower your dish like you don't know. You need to measure this. Okay, so half a teaspoon of allspice. Got that. Now we have our cumin. Our cumin. We have our cumin. Teaspoon of cumin. And two tablespoons of, let me just grab, oh wait a second, I'm just going to grab one of these. Grab your measure as well, this I don't need to, but grab your measure as well. We're going to do two tablespoons, a tablespoon and a quarter of tomato paste. If you don't have tomato paste, you need to double that, double that with tomato sauce. So like a can of tomato sauce is good. So now we're going to stir. Yeah, it smells good. Woo, it smells so good in here. I'll show you what it's going to start to look like. Now one thing I add to my rice, which is different from what the authentic jollof rice in West Africa is, is I add a little bit of uh, yellow coloring. It's very popular in Latin cuisine when making rices, like when you make chicken and rice, and it's just called yellow coloring. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of that. A teaspoon there a teaspoon of that it's perfect like I said guys I eyeball everything I've been doing this for a long time so but today's gonna be exciting because today you are gonna have two different countries on one plate when I come back I'm gonna get my rice in the pan and we are going to get our beans in the pan and you don't want to miss this I will be back my oxtail is already in my pressure cooker and it has just stopped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I check it. You check it to make sure. Remember, it's very, very, um, it's very tough meat. So you need vinegar. The secret to Cuban oxtail, Cubans call it rabo encendido. So the secret to it is the vinegar and the black pepper that you use. Encendido means hot. And rabo means oxtail because it is a tail. Tail means rabo in Spanish. So rabo encendido. So when I come back, we're going to get the rice in the pan. And you don't want to miss this. Okay, guys. I'm back. So our rice is in the pot. And I'm going to put this on medium high. And wait for this to come to a boil. When this comes to a boil, we're going to put it one before medium. When it boils, and we're going to cover it. For approximately 20 minutes or you can wait 15 and check it to see if it's dry then we're going to stir it and we're going to cover it again so as you can see making rice in the cazuela is a little bit different than a machine that does it for you which is that little rice cooker that i use and i still use the same ingredients uh, that i mentioned before but we're making it now we're making it on the stove so we're going to wait for this baby to uh, come to a boil We've got our black eyed peas in there, our water, our two cups of rice. Don't forget, it's two to two. The ratio is one to one, actually. I'm sorry. So it's a cup of rice to a cup of water. So in this case, it's two cups of rice to two cups of water, two and two. 
So don't forget that. So let me check on my oxtail and uh, I'll be back and show you what it looks like. And uh, we'll get the, I'll show you the ingredients for the oxtail and we'll get everything on the stove. I will be back. Okay guys, here's our jollof rice. Can you guys see that? Okay, now if you think that your rice, it's one before medium. So if you think, what I do for my rice to make it a little bit, uh, to make it not sticky of course, to make the grains nice and soft and shiny, I grab a splash of cold water and a fork. Let me grab the fork. I'm going to show you a little secret with rice. So grab a fork. Grab a fork. Have your fork handy and ready. Have it handy and ready. I'm going to pour a little sprinkle. You hear it sizzle of rice. And we are going to fork the rice. So I'm forking the rice. I'm going to fork the rice. I just spilled my water you guys sorry about that and now we're gonna cover the rice I'm gonna cover it again and we're gonna put it one more before medium and we're probably gonna leave it there for about five minutes and we're gonna check it and stir it again and that cold water will expand the rice it will separate the rice that's a little secret that I have sorry for the chaos with the camera I'm by myself today so just trying to get it done to show you and uh, I'll be back with uh, the oxtail. The oxtail actually took uh, 30 minutes in the pressure cooker, so I'm waiting. There's five minutes left. I checked it at 20 minutes, and it still needed a little bit more. So if you boil it in a pot early for an hour and 20 minutes, you're good to go. As long as the uh, as long as your oxtail, when you take it out, you test it, and it's fork tender, it's good to go. You don't want it too tender because we're going to put it in our pan. Don't forget, we're going to saute it in our pan with our onions, pepper, and our spices. Let me show you the spices for, follow me, I'm going to show you the spices for the oxtail. Okay, guys, here's our jollof rice. Can you guys see that? Okay, now, if you think that your rice, it's one before medium. So if you think, what I do for my rice to make it a little bit, uh, to make it not sticky, of course, to make the grains nice and soft and shiny, I grab a splash of cold water and a fork. Let me grab the fork. I'm going to show you a little secret with rice. So grab a fork. Grab a fork. Have your fork handy and ready. Have it handy and ready. I'm going to pour a little sprinkle. You hear it sizzle of rice and we are going to fork the rice. So I'm forking the rice. I'm going to fork the rice. And now, oops, I just spilled my water, you guys. Sorry about that. And now we're going to cover the rice. I'm going to cover it again and we're going to put it one more before medium. And we're probably going to leave it there for about five minutes and we're going to check it and stir it again. And that cold water will expand the rice. It will separate the rice. That's a little secret that I have. Sorry for the chaos with the camera. I'm by myself today. So just trying to get it done to show you. And uh, I'll be back with uh, the oxtail. The oxtail actually took uh, 30 minutes in the pressure cooker so I'm waiting there's five minutes left I checked it at 20 minutes and it still needed a little bit more so if you boil it in a pot early for an hour and 20 minutes you're good to go as long as the uh, as long as your oxtail when you take it out you test it and it's fork tender it's good to go you don't want it too tender because we're gonna put it in our pan don't forget we're gonna saute it in our pan with our onions pepper and our spices let me show you the spices for follow me i'm going to show you the spices for the oxtail here are the spices guys for the cuban style oxtail we've got half a medium green pepper diced half a medium yellow onion diced a teaspoon of garlic powder a teaspoon of onion powder a teaspoon of cumin i've got a teaspoon of oregano and of course i've got a teaspoon of paprika and two large fresh cloves of garlic and of course, we can't forget, I'm going to use vinegar in the dish, and I'll show you, and the black pepper and the salt. So don't go away. I'll be right back. 
Okay guys, I went to wash my hands. I just took the lid off our rice and now we are going to, let me show you what it looks like. Like I said, you guys, I apologize, I'm alone today, but hey, it is what it is and I'm just a regular home cook that just adores to do what I do. Look at that. I don't know about you guys, but I've said it in my previous videos. Uh oh, I think the oxtail is done. I've said it in my previous videos where I don't uh, serve anything unless I taste it, so let's taste it. Ooh, it's hot. It smells so festive in here. Oh my god, you guys, so delicious. The allspice comes through. You can taste the creaminess of the black eyed peas and our spices that we use in the sweetness of the carrots. Oh my gosh, so delicious. See, there's certain recipes of certain foods in different parts of the world that we didn't even know existed. Or that, I, I take that back, we knew existed, we just never kind of thought of making it here in our own home, and look how easy it is with our ingredients. We can create a dish that's being created in kitchens and in homes every night 9,000 miles away from here. Exactly 9,000 miles away from here. So imagine that. You can take your family to two countries tonight at the dinner table. So let me check out my oxtail and uh, I'll be back. I've got my oil in the stove to saute our onions and green peppers for the oxtail and you don't want to miss it. This is going to be a delicious collision when it's on the plate. So join me. I'll be back. I'm back you guys and the oxtail is out of the pressure cooker check that out nice and soft and now I am heating up my vegetables which is of course the green pepper and the onions in this case I'm gonna bring all my spices over and just drop them in all together and the smell in here is gonna be ridiculous let me grab the spices I'll be right back Don't forget to put the garlic, the fresh garlic, in last because garlic burns easily, so don't forget that. All right. Two spices that are missing are the black pepper and the salt. I can hear the oil sizzling, so let me put this baby in real quick. The two spices missing, and of course, something else that I always use in my dishes is a little bit of chicken base. Just a teaspoon because we're going to use some salt, so... Just a teaspoon. That's it, a teaspoon of chicken base. We are going to grab our salt and we are going to put about half a um, teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon and a half. We're going to grab our pepper and we are going to put a teaspoon of pepper. And here we have our garlic powder, our onion powder, just drop it in, our paprika. If you want to use fresh red peppers, you can, but who has time for that? So I sometimes don't, or sometimes I do. Oregano, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of cumin, and let's stir it up, baby. Now, if you notice, I'm using my new spoon. I used it for the rice, and now I'm using it to saute. Make sure if you use the same spoon, when the spoon touches the rice, make sure you wash the spoon before you use it with your oxtail in this case because of the allspice. It's a very potent spice, and you don't want allspice in your oxtail because they don't use allspice and oxtail in Cuba. And today we're working with Cuba. So now I'm going to grab... No, that, that, that's all I'm going to grab. I'm not going to use tomato paste in this because I already used it in my rice. So I, I don't want to over, over tomato my dish. I don't like my dishes to, I don't like for anything to overpower my dish. I like for everything to be combined and work out well for the palate. I don't like for you to taste something and say, wow, so much tomato in this dish. Or too much garlic in this dish. Or too much this or that. So... I'm very careful when it comes to that, and there are certain spices that go together well. This is my main uh, 
generally my main sofrito ingredient. Garlic, onions, peppers. I always enhance my onions with some garlic powder. Excuse me, onion powder. I always say it backwards, you guys. And I enhance my fresh garlic with garlic powder. So now I'm going to show you real quick how this baby is looking. See that? We're sauteing our veggies. Now keep in mind, you guys, the oxtail's done. So we're going to make a nice simmer sauce. We're going to pour it in there, and it's not it's going to be done in no time. So if you boil it for an hour and 20 minutes, it'll be good. Until it's fork tender, actually. So. And mine is fork tender and so delicious. Oxtail has such a robust flavor, meaty flavor. Oh, my God. It's so delicious, you guys. All right, so now we're going to gra grab our fresh garlic. Drop in the fresh garlic. Let's get back here. I always like to try to jump out of the pan. All right, so we got our spices here. Let's get our little spice containers and take them. Take them to the sink. I'm going to drop them off. And we're coming back to stir and stir. I'm going to lower this so you guys can see what is going on in here. All right, you guys see that so far? All right, perfect. There it is, so far. So I'm stirring this in. Now keep in mind, the water that you have where you boiled your oxtail, do not throw it away, please. Now I'm going to grab a heaping tablespoon of vinegar. I said before, Cuban oxtail, the two secrets are pepper and vinegar. There's a secret to every dish from every grandma from every country in the world, and this is my grandma's secret. So we're going to pour our vinegar. Nice tablespoon of vinegar. We're going to stir, and now we are going to put, we're going to place our oxtail in there. Don't throw it all in there because it'll splatter and it can hit you in, the, in your face. You can get burned, so be very careful. Oh my God, oxtail is so delicious. It's so worth the price. It is pricier, I guess, because I guess it's pricier because obviously each cow only has one tail, so imagine that. It's kind of like chicken wings are expensive. The chickens, it sounds terrible to say, but I'm just saying it's just how it is. So we're going to put that there. So we're going to let this simmer. Let it simmer in our, in our sauce. Now we're going to grab half a ladle of our oxtail water that we boiled in, and we're going to pour it in. That way we can get more sauce. Okay, and we're going to stir it. We're going to constantly stir it so we can get all those flavors marinated in there. It doesn't take long at all to use a pressure cooker. It's a little lengthier time if you need to boil it for an hour and 20 minutes, but that, uh, or, or until it's fork tender, and that's okay. You know, if you don't know how to use a pressure cooker or don't have one, please don't worry. You can do that. You know, I've been cooking for a long time, and I've been using old-fashioned pressure cookers. Uh, I've been using the fancy gadgets. I've used it all. I mean, you know those old-fashioned, uh, not old-fashioned, but you know those pressure cookers where you have the uh, the little uh, the little pedal on top that it starts to dance? It starts going... starts to dance. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do is, I've got all my oxtail covered in my meat, so now I'm going to cover my oxtail, and I'm going to drop it to a high-low. You guys remember that? Two, do two dots after low. So we're going to just leave it there. I can hear it sizzling, and I can only imagine my husband going crazy in the room right now. The rice is so delicious. When I come back, you guys, we're going to plate this dish, and I'm going to taste this dish. And you don't want to miss this. This is so delicious. So remember, tonight you are bringing two countries that are going to collide on one plate to your dinner table. And boy, is it hearty, meaty, and delicious. So stay tuned. I'll be back. Hey, guys, one thing I forgot to mention. Check that out. I put it on high heat for probably a minute. Just turn and turn so we can get all those concentrated flavors from the sofrito in our dish. So I'm about to plate. 
Let's grab the plates now. Well, you guys, look who showed up in the kitchen from the smell. I told you, when the extractor's off, everybody comes running. And I'm going to give him a taste of the jollof rice, see what he thinks. It's good. That's amazing. It's good? Mm -hmm. You like it? Now get out of here until dinner's ready. <laughs> I'll be back, you guys. I can't keep these boys away from my kitchen because of the smell. The extractor's off. If I had the extractor on right now, you wouldn't be able to hear me. So the smells that goes throughout the house. So give me a few. And like I said before, you don't want to miss this. We are colliding Africa, West Africa and Cuba on one plate. They will collide and be so delicious. It'll be something you'll never forget. So let's travel at our dinner table tonight. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I'm serving myself. Get myself a little bit of sauce from the bottom, and I'm ready to taste. Here's my fork, and here's my sample. Okay, let's see. Oh my god, it smells so delicious. Dear god, it smells so good. This is this rice is uh, very similar to a Puerto Rican rice called arroz con gandules, which is rice with pigeon peas, although it's different because the Puerto Ricans. Uh, add ham to that rice when they're sauteing their sofrito, which is so delicious. The pigeon peas also, so let's try it. Oh my god. I'm sorry guys, I gotta try it again. Two eyes. I got to put this plate down so I don't. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so delicious. You can taste the allspice, the vinegar, and the and the oxtail, the black pepper. It's such a robust piece of meat and so rich. But as I mentioned in previous videos, acid, especially in a rich dish, is so important to level that whole dish out this video the like button subscribe today and don't forget the notification bell that way I'll notify you of all my videos and all my interesting and delicious recipes and if you have any questions shoot me down a comment and I will respond right away and don't forget you guys the recipe for this dish is in the drop down menu so guess what Hello Africa, hello Cuba. So now I will kindly say, as they say in West Africa, Medasi, which means goodbye. And it means also, which means thank you for joining me as well. So Medasi also means thank you. Thank you or goodbye is how they use it. And in Cuba, it's adios y gracias, which means goodbye and thank you. So thank you for watching this video, and uh, I will see you soon with another new video for Stovetop Yum Yum.